A couple of weeks ago, I was contacted by Quiddy Tech. They are a 3D printing company which makes 3D printers. They wanted to send me out their new iMate S and to see if I would uh, test it and show you guys what this machine is capable of and also of course show you a couple of examples of what 3D printing can do for your scale modeling workbench or even the scale models you build yourself. So normally when I receive FDM 3D printers they still require a pretty big amount of assembly and adjustment before you can finally start using it and it is set up properly. With the iMate S it is just simply an unboxing and a little bit of setup that you usually have. In this case it is made for uh, printing different materials so you can print various materials like ABS, PLA and various other FDM printing materials. So there are various different options. You can see there is a top lid and also some lids on the side which can be removed. And if you're printing a lower temperature material like PLA, you simply just need to remove those as otherwise it would get too hot inside of the printer itself. And it also comes with a nice flexible build plate, has a spool holder on the top of the printer itself which can be uh, put in or out. If you want to use it or not, you can of course use this one from the machine itself, which works perfectly fine. However, if you were to use a very old spool of PLA, you could also use a filament dryer to improve the quality of the older spool. Now, as with any other printer, there are a couple of things you need to do before you can start your first print. In this case, you need to remove a couple of clips from the inside that keep it safe and sound during shipping. Then, of course, start the leveling procedure, which is perfectly explained on the machine itself and they have various videos on their YouTube channel and then of course you can start on your first print with a really weird test file. So the test file is out of the way and completed and looks pretty good so I decided to slice my own files and start the actual process. Now there were a couple of hiccups here and there but that was all fixed. So during the initial installation of the machine there was an older software on it which had some glitches in it so I just quickly contacted support from Quiddy. They replied very fast, sent me out the new software to be installed on the machine and after that it worked perfectly fine. And with that now resolved I could move on to finishing off the testing sequel with various different prints that I wanted to try out on this one specifically focused on organizing your workbench and mainly even the paint section of your workbench. So with a lot of printers in the FDM section bed adhesion can be a very big problem. Now with this Quiddy uh, iMate S that certainly was a problem but in a different manner than it usually would be. The prints stuck to the bed so well that I actually had trouble getting them off sometimes. Now that was down to a couple of settings in the actual software. That was fixed again after contacting uh, Quiddy 3D's service department and simply just uh, changing a couple of settings in the slicing software completely resolved that problem. The prints do stick really well to the print bed still but aren't stuck there permanently luckily. And with that we can move on to the next point and that is that the price on this printer might be a bit higher than usual as there are two uh, flexible build plates included and there is also an additional extruder included not just a nozzle but an actual extruder. Now it should make it a lot easier to change it out from a 0.4 to a 0.2 but I personally think that this is a bit overkill and makes this printer incredibly more expensive than it should be as I don't really know what to do with a full extra extruder, just a nozzle would have been good enough for me. So as usual with these 3D printers you get a nice USB stick or SD card and on there it has uh, some of the instruction manuals, also most of the times the software or the slicer software that you need to download and install on your computer and a test file to test the printer itself. I have no idea what this specifically is but it printed fine and the machine looked to be working really well. So like I said earlier I did run into a couple of problems when actually slicing my own files. There is a software included from uh, Quiddy Tech themselves for the slicing and that needs to be used for the slicing of the files in order for them to print. Now some of the files printed mostly okay, it doesn't really look all that great and has a bit of over extrusion on some of the smaller parts. So I tried to fiddle around with the settings a bit more and it did resolve it just a little bit 
but there still was over extrusion on these uh, smaller pins on the top and it simply just prints too fast, extrudes too much and uh, doesn't pull back enough when it goes to the other side to finish it off. Now again, just like earlier, I contacted their customer support. They were really, really helpful, came up with a solution really quickly and simply just shared some of their settings for the machine that I needed to adjust and that pretty much fixed all of it. It no longer over extrudes or no longer really over extrudes all that much as it did before and the parts come out really nice and smooth now. All of the parts so far that you have seen were printed with PLA and also silk PLA from Sunlu. I will be leaving links in the description down below to all of these machines. Of course, as you can see in the background, the iBoss systems and also the Sunlu filament dryer and of course also the filament and mainly the machine itself will be linked down below if you are interested in purchasing one of these. So like I said earlier in the video, I'm focusing this one specifically on workbench organization and more specifically on the paint side of things. So what I printed out here were actually some paint storage racks for some of the Vallejo paints. They fit in here perfectly nice, even snap in place a little bit so they are really steady in there and don't really move around all that much. So with the smaller ones completed and working fine, I figured I'd print the actual capacity of the entire printer out a bit more by putting in some larger size files. These ones pretty much filled up the entire print bed from left to right and front to back. They are printed in one piece with no supports and that is actually pretty impressive as there is quite a large overhang that is not supported from left to right. Now, not all of them printed out perfectly, but most of them did, and in the end, there were no fails whatsoever, and the part is completely structural as well. And for the size that this is, it stuck well to the print bed itself, as I mentioned earlier. It does have a little bit of uh, a wonky finish on the side and also on that bridging part. The first one was uh, a bit of a fail, but overall, after a couple more layers, it fixed itself nicely and it didn't even change the structural stability of the part itself. Now, I think with a bit of tweaking, this can be resolved even more, but that all has to do with experience and knowledge on the machine itself. And uh, I don't really have it that much, but I'm getting there slowly but steadily. So maybe uh, after a bit more testing and trying different settings, it can be fixed even better and have a perfectly smooth finish. But overall, I'm really happy with the way that these files came out. They are functional racks for your Vallejo paints and they actually look pretty cool. If you don't have uh, one of these fancy setups I have from Hobby Zone, you can now of course print them yourself if you are working on a lower budget or they simply aren't available near you. Now these storage solutions that I've printed so far are mainly focused on Vallejo paints, but if you don't use those, but use Mr. Hobby or even Tamiya paints, you can print various other ones out as well. I found all of these on Thingiverse, just simply typing in uh, Tamiya or Vallejo, Mr. Hobby, or just uh, a paint storage solution and multiple of them come up. You can download most of them for free and simply just start printing them. So this is another cool solution to use your FDM 3D printers for. Now again, they are not for fine detail parts, so you can't really print any wheels or other parts for your builds, but these larger structural parts as uh, these paint racks and maybe even tools are the perfect way of using these printers to help your hobby side of things along. 